thank you, Lord. Father, 
Father, that you will allow us, Lord, empower us, Father, to keep our eyes stayed on you. And that your words of truth will continue to bring life, to bring peace, to bring hope to our lives. Father, we say thank you. thank you. We praise you for that which you are doing. And we lift you up, Lord. Father, we thank you, Lord, even for this week, Lord. A week that has dwelt on relationships and marriages, Lord, that you have, oh God, instituted. We pray, Father, Lord, that the respect and the honor that is given to these positions, Father, would raise, Lord, as your words begin to flow throughout the land. I pray, Lord, that you continue to bless every marriage. I pray that you bless the relationship, relationships between mother and father, husband and wife, and so on, that every family, Lord, will begin to stand on your word. As your words, Lord, digest within our hearts, then we'll be able to, Lord, show forth that which you have for us, that which you have expected for us, that which you have put in place for us that our life will just glorify you. And so, Father, we don't want to be, Lord, ungrateful. We don't want to forget what you are doing for us. We don't want to forget what you've done for us. And so, as we lift you up, Father, we pray that our hearts and our minds will stay on you. Lord, we also remember those who have sent in a request. They may not be here, Father, but they have heard your name. They've heard about you. And so forth, Lord, so Father, they've also sent their names in for salvation. And so, Lord, as I lay my hand upon this list, I pray, Lord, that every name that has requested salvation, Father, Lord, that you would now minister to them, that you would bring, Lord, you would take the reality of your truth to every heart, that the words, Lord, that they have listened to, to your servant who has spoken to them, I pray, Father, that those words would become life within their spirit now, and that they would begin to germinate, Father, a truth that was sent from your throne, Lord. I pray, Lord, for those that are requesting healing at this moment, Whatever the name of the sickness is, Father, in the name of Jesus, we know, Lord, that they are subjected to you. And, Lord, that you were, oh, Lord, you were broken for our sins. You were broken for our sicknesses. And it is still through you that deliverance comes. And through the cross of Calvary and through your death and your resurrection, we come to you today, living, Lord, that you would minister to them that you would bring healing to every life, Lord. That you would bring deliverance, Lord, in every problem. Lord, and that, that you would give your servant, your people, Lord, a testimony today. Father, be thou glorified in everything that is said and done. Be thou glorified in this house. Be thou glorified outside of this house. Be thou glorified in the community, Lord. As we call upon you, living Lord. Be thou glorified. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Bless the Lord. Amen. Let me just give an update. We prayed for you, a, a, a gentleman called John, who had a tumor. And the information is that the tumor has now shrunk. We just give God the glory, we give him the praise, because it's not by our might, but by his power and it's by his spirit. As we believe in the living Lord, let us speak as he would have us to speak, to speak life and to speak his word and to believe it, and to walk in them, knowing that he is able. Amen.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Here I am to worship. Here I am to bow down. Hallelujah. Here am I. I say, Thou said the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Praise God. We are at the moment where we want to lift the morning tide and offering. Praise be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. As we raise our spirit before God. Amen. As we bring our gift before Him. Amen. But we're not looking at the material gift, but we free ourselves as we give ourselves away. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. I'll ask you if you will join with me in prayer as you raise your offering. If you have your tithe envelopes and your hand ready. And as we give God thanks for the gift that you have brought into his house. And also as you present the gift, you present yourself. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, Heavenly Father, we thank you. We bless you, Lord, for your God. There is no other like unto you. The heaven declare you. And the firmament showed you on the world. Every day we see your wonders, Lord, in the heaven. Throughout all eternity, you are God. And we praise you this morning, Lord, for health and strength. We thank you for grace and favor. We thank you, Lord, that we, you are prosperous, that many have gold and toil and can able to bring an offering oh, into thine house. We thank you, O oh Lord. Thank Hallelujah. You. Hallelujah. We bless you for the workplace. And we bless you for the divine energy that you have given to your people. Oh God, we thank you for prosperity. We ask you now to remember everyone that bring an offering. Lord, you see their life. You see their way. You see all that the struggle that they are going through. But in every way, Lord, help them to acknowledge you. I ask you to bless this offering. Sanctify it now. Lord, the tithes and the offering, as they give, Help them, Lord, that everyone give them, do it willingly, wholeheartedly, because you the one that give it, and you the one that bless. Thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Just follow the instruction of the ushers and they will guide you in the way you should approach it. God bless you. Thank you.
And so, Father, we thank you. We are about to now, Lord, to receive from you what you have prepared and provided for us through your word. We pray that our heart will now become a, a receptive one to re receive and to accept, Lord, what it is in your word. May your spirit be upon the daughter and your handmaid, our master. Lord, I ask it in the name of Jesus. Bless this day. And Lord, release somebody now in Jesus' name by your spirit that they not got their burden with no word. Because God, your word, come to set captive free and to build them in you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Let me thank God for all who are in the house of the Lord today. Amen. Amen. Are you glad you're in God's house today? Yes. Are you glad you're in the house of the Lord today? Yes. Yes. Are you glad you're amongst the company of the believers today? Yes. Say amen then. Amen. 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 We're in the house of the Lord with the company of believers. Let me welcome you. Everyone here today, and especially those who are visiting with us, and uh, good to have you again with us, fellowshipping with us. Good to have Brother and Sister Leonard uh, coming over to support the Thompsons family who are in the house as well this afternoon. Let's give God thanks for the Thompson family. Amen. Hallelujah. In everything we give God thanks. Amen. Mommy has gone home, but as Reverend Maynard said, there's no place like home. She's got home to be with the Lord. And you're here this morning. We give God thanks for you. Lord, I lift my spirit to
chapter 3. And he entered the synagogue again, talking about Jesus. Mark chapter 3, verse 1. And he entered the synagogue again, and a man was there who had a withered hand. So they watched him closely, whether he would heal him on the Sabbath, so that they might accuse him. And he said to the man with the hand that was withered, step forward. I'm reading from the New King James Version. Then he said to them, is it lawful on the Sabbath to do good or to do evil? To save life or to kill? But they kept silent. And when he had looked around at them with anger, being grieved by the hardness of their hearts, he said to the man, stretch out your hand. And he stretched it out, and his hand was restored as whole as the other. Shall we say, Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Oh, God. Oh, hallelujah. <laughs> if we would be completely honest, most of us, most people live in the shadow of something that we don't want exposing. We don't want anybody to know about it. There are things about us that we don't want anyone to know. Because if they find out, if they know, we will become a talking point. <coughs> we will become the topic of conversation because that's how people are. We will be the topic of ours of not only conversation, but unsavory conversation. Because you know how we get two, two words and then we build a story around it. Opinions would be expressed and judgment made without due consideration for our feelings. So how do we cope with our shadowy issues? How do we cope with our dark issues? How do we cope with our secrets that we don't want anybody to know about? Because all of us have them. Everybody sitting in front of me today have some secret. I have a secret, you have a secret. What we would do sometimes we recoil and retreat into the crowd in the hope that we will not become the center of attention because we want not only to protect the secret, but to protect ourselves. Amen. We would retreat into the crowd in the hope that we will go unnoticed because we don't want anybody to know what is going on in our lives. We just don't want anybody to know. There are some things you don't want anybody to know about. The best thing for you to do is that God and you know about it. And so what we do sometimes, we hide ourselves away in different things just to keep the secret. We will attend conferences, but we have a secret. We will frequent seminars, we have a secret. We will come to the prayer services, but we have a deep hidden secret. We delight in going to men's retreat, women's retreat, youth retreat, ministers retreat, but we all have a secret. But there is something about us that requires a divine exposure. At some time, 
the secret will have to be exposed. And it is only in the presence of Jesus that some secrets, when they are exposed, they will get dealt with properly. Amen. Are you following me so far? In the text, Mark chapter 3, we see three sets of players. There is the man who was physically challenged. The Bible says he had a withered hand. He had a deformed hand. I don't know if he was born like that or if he had something else, what went on in his life. But the Bible said he had a hand which was not working properly. And all of us have a hand <laughs> that is not working properly. None of us sitting in here today is perfect. We have something that's not ticking right, something not functioning right. But I have news for us today, we are in the right place. We're in the presence of the Almighty God. So we have this man who was physically challenged. Mark told us he had a withered hand, but Luke, being the doctor, told us it was his right hand. It was more specific. In the book of Luke, chapter 6, he told us it was his right hand. And you know, if you, unless you're ambidextrous, whether you use your left hand or your right hand, um, you know, you can, some people can use both. You can use your left, you can use your right like me. I can use my right hand. And if ever I have to use my left hand, it becomes very challenging. Amen. Amen. But this man, right hand, maybe, you know, he had to learn to use his left hand. Something went wrong, so he had to use, learn to use his left hand. But the Luke tells us it was his right hand. And every time in scripture you see the right hand, the right hand is symbolic of strength and power and protection and prosperity and everything. You hear about the right hand of God, Jesus going back to heaven and sitting at the right hand of God. Of, of God, which is the, the, the side of authority and power. So this man's right hand being crippled was very significant. Amen. So we have him. Then the next set of players we find are the religious people who had a contention Oh, Lord Almighty, here we go. Religious people who were contentious because they didn't want Jesus to do anything, whether it was the Sabbath day or any other day, people didn't want Jesus to do anything that was good because they were looking for an occasion. They were seeking an opportunity to criticize him, to get him hauled up in front of the authorities to accuse him of being disobedient and he was a per they wanted to accuse him of being a person of dissent and, and everything and a rabble rouser and there are those of us uh, in church who when we are going all out for God people really think we are contentious and mostly it's the, re the people who are very pious, very religious, and they want to stick to the rules. Yes. And they, they just want to keep the rules, but they don't see beyond the, the boundaries. They don't see the wider picture of what God is doing for us. So you had the religious people. Then there was Jesus. In the midst of all this, you have the man with the withered hand. You had the man with the hand that was not working right. You had the contentious religious people over here. And in the center of them, you had Jesus. So you have three sets of players. Oh, glory to God. And I love Jesus. Anywhere there was something. Of interest, he would be in the middle of it. I want to say today that in your life, if something is dried up, ensure that Jesus gets into the middle of it. Hallelujah. Ensure that Jesus gets into the middle of your dried up situation. 
Oh, glory to God. So Jesus had a determination to fulfill his ministry. And so on that day, he says, I don't care what you religious people think. Sometimes you've got to get pushed beyond the religious people and just let Jesus do what he's going to do for you because if you sit around waiting for the, by the time they put the rules in place, your blessing is past. But Jesus, on that occasion, said today is the day when I'm going to break the rules. Oh, glory to God. So that this man can be healed. It is significant to learn that all of this took place in church. The Bible says it was in the synagogue. All of this was played out in church. The man was in church, but he had something wrong with him. That's the place to be when something is wrong with you in church. That's not the time to stay away when something is wrong. That's when you should turn up. The man was in church, but something was not right with him. And the religious people were in church, and Jesus was in church, so everybody is in church. The man who had something wrong with him, the people who were self-righteous, and Jesus, everybody, were in church. It took place at the synagogue, a place of learning and a place of prayer. <clears throat> These people, the Pharisees and the scribes and them, they were so learned that they couldn't look beyond their learning to see a miracle take place. This tells me that there are people in church with problems like that man. And there are those who are indifferent to their needs. The man was in church, but people were indifferent to their needs. All they were concerned about was to have their own little religious rites carried out. We've got to push beyond the norm. If we're going to get a blessing, if we're going to have a breakthrough, if there's going to be a difference made in our life, we've got to push beyond the norm. You've got to stretch yourself for the religious people as long as the musicians play. Oh, we want to play. As long as the choir sings our favorite song. And as long as our favorite preacher takes the lectern for the day, we are all right. But then Jesus wants to do different in the church. I'm declaring to the church in Dudley today, if we want to see the miracle working hand of God, we've got to let Jesus loose in this place. life. 
You should only come to church if everything is going right. And I'm not advocating people living loose lives. But within the body of believers, we've got to, if we want to see growth and progress, not only in our lives, but among each other, we've got to learn and start to see that God is going to bring people in that have issues. And the church will have to be at a place where we will have to learn to deal with them. We're going to have people come in here that they're going to have hair down to their back. They're going to have things through their nose, spikes in their hair, tattoo everywhere. But whatever happens, we've got to learn. We've got to learn that everybody's not going to be like us. People are going to have issues. And people are going to have struggles. But listen, as long as they are coming to Jesus. Hallelujah. And everything's not going to be all right in church. Because people have problems. People have problems at home. They have their will at hand in their marriage. They have their will at hand with their children. They have their will at hand in their finances. Talk to me somebody. And I have a
change in the face of opposition. When Jesus wants to heal you, nobody can stop it. And he's ready to do your healing. Some of you are looking everywhere to hear what I mean. But I said there's spiritual deformity in the house. And Jesus is ready to heal it. And when he's ready to heal it, he's here to heal it. And nobody can stop it. No one can stop it. Because Jesus is here with us. Nobody can stop him wanting to heal us. The man, his case was very pitiful. He had this hand by which he was unable to work for his living. I think this man over many years would have struggled, don't you? Because you've got to remember that in that society, to have any form of impediment was regarded as a curse. It would have been said that it's either you sin or your parents sin. And people would have shunned him and looked down on him. And he would not have been able to work properly for his living. The Bible does not indicate that the man was born like that or if he sustained his disability going about his normal daily life. However, he, was, he had this deformity. This misfortune had befallen the man. Sometimes in life you bring certain things on yourself but there are times in life when things just happen he had this misfortune in life and some people sitting in front of me today may have a, you may have had a misfortune in life you know your business back up talk to me yeah. you're going quiet Nobody not said anything. Your business pop up. Maybe sometimes you didn't handle it right. Or you had a misfortune. Your relationship break down. Probably you didn't, you know, you only saw your side of the, of the story. But you didn't see the other side. Because my grandmother used to say to me, there are three sides to a story. Your side, my side, and the other side. <laughs> <laughs> and so you may have something which has dried up on you and it stopped that man from performing properly and you know when you're not functioning right and let's go back to the spiritual connection now you know when something dry up in your life spiritually you stop performing right, you know. Yes. You stop performing. Yes. You stop doing what you should do. Yes. You lose your joy. Everything is out of sync. Yes. Listen to me. This thing. All right. <laughs> yes. All right. Everything gets out of sync when you're not performing right. And you need to get back in alignment. So you lose your joy because spiritual deformity is taking place. You lose your joy. That's the first thing that the devil takes. Your joy. Takes your joy away. And before you know it, you, you start ease off. You know, when you're driving and you want to go fast, some of us, you know, let me tell you, when you're driving and you want to go fast, you go into a gear and you put your foot down and you're pumping gas yes. because you want to go fast. Well, when you lose your joy and spiritual deformity take place, you change down gear and you lift your foot off the pedal and before you know it, you start to slow down and before you know it, you start and so you stop coming 
to keep him from church. We find the Bible says, forget not the assembling of yourself together as a matter of something. That man didn't allow his disability body to keep him from church. I don't care what's happening to you. Hell could be breaking loose. Come hell or high water. You should find yourself in the house Amen. of God. In the company of the believers. You too can't Thank you Lord. Thank you Lord. Thank you Lord. Thank you Lord. And I feel like saying today, show me your hand. from church. Now, if he was born like that, then we must be aware that we come into this world with issues that we don't really create. If he was born like that, we come into this world with issues we don't create, you know. Because there are some of us, we are born to certain families, and trust me, we are crippled. <laughs> we, are not, we are crippled because of the families we were born, we were born in. Are you, uh, anybody saying? Yeah. 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 I say some of us are crippled yeah. because of the families we were born in. We come into this world to some families that it's only the mighty power of God that can release us Amen. from those families. Amen. Father go jail. Grandfather went jail. Amen. Children gone jail. So we have this generational curse coming down that needs to be broken from all of our life. Grandfather died not having anything. Father died not having anything. And you come now, you can hardly make two ends meet. And from the day you were born until the day you died, you owe nothing. You just walk through life. Because life, because of where we come from. And it just comes down the stream. That man had that withered hand. We don't know. That situation was created for him. There are some situations that were created for us. Grandmother divorce, father divorce, mother divorce. You, you see what I mean? I mean, practical here. And so we have the cycle. Grandmother had all her children out of wedlock. Mother had her children out of wedlock. You come, you have your children out of wedlock. Some of you are not talking to me, but you think I'm talking foolishness or I'm talking your business. That's why you're gone so quiet. You have one child, two children, four, five, six, and then you jump over here and you have some more and all kind of things happening in your life. And then the children. Jesus is in the house, Brother Silver. Jesus is in the house, Sister Thomas. 
difficult situation, you know. A very difficult situation. My grandmother, my that you hear me talk about so much. Let me tell you about my personal thing. She was never married. Then she had all her children and never married. That was it. Then my mother came and she had three of us. And she was not married. It was only after the third, if I think, that my mom got married. And one night I was in church. I was about 13 years old, Brother Freddy. And I thought my mother was in England and all three of us with our grandmother. And I remember that night I looked around that little wooden church and I said, whatever happened to my mother yeah. is not gonna happen to me. The curse comes here. Oh, oh, glory to God, hallelujah. The curse stops here. Yeah. I took a stand, I took a stand, I took a stand, and what was dried up in my family turned some things that you didn't bargain for. No. But Jesus is able to deal with them. It doesn't matter. Jesus is able to deal with them. Jesus is able to deal with them. Whatever life has dealt you, Jesus is able to deal with them. If he required, if he acquired his disability otherwise, we must appreciate that during our lifetime, we are going to face challenges. So, if he was born like that, he couldn't help it. And if he acquired it, if he acquired it, we must appreciate that things are going to happen to people. But, we have a, we have a, a warped, I don't know, I call it war. Probably that's a strong word. We have this probably distorted, naive view of life that when you are a Christian, you know, let's home it, let's bring it home to a Christian, that nothing should happen to you. Well, I tell you this, as Christians, things are going to happen. Yes. Your children are going to disappoint you. All right. Your marriage is going to struggle. You're gonna have some financial issues. Yeah. You will. Yeah. You're gonna have some failing health. Yeah. As long as you're in this house, oh, things are gonna happen. Yeah. People are gonna bad mouth you. Yes. You're gonna be disappointed in life. Yes. But those things come to serve as springboards yes. to catapult us into the Let's hold me in back into physical things and natural things. We go to the doctor, and the doctor says to us, you know, Mrs. Green, the news is not good. You have six months to live, or you have your, your tumor is malignant. Some of us, we talk, we see, you see me, and instead of telling me, me telling you, I'm Mrs. Green, say, well, William, you know what? The doctor told me I have a tumor, and it's, I talk around the issue, and I said, I don't understand what the doctor tell me, when the doctor don't tell you. <laughs> And we talk around the issue. We are going to have issues. We are going to have problems. Amen. We are going to have challenges. And I'm saying to you, I'm going to have challenges in my life. You may not like everything that you see about me, but God is still working on me, all right? We are going to get some knocks and blows along the way of life. And when I get mine up, please help me up, don't knock me down. When I get a knock, don't knock me down. Hallelujah. Don't knock me down, no. try and help me. 
Him. Yes. But the Bible does not indicate that the man requested healing, you know. The man was just in church. That man had a desire to be in church. Ishmael, the man went to the synagogue and the Bible did not say he requested healing. He just had a desire to be in church, even with his withered hand. You must have a desire to be in church, even with your withered hand. Whether you hear that Jesus is going to turn up or not, and you should expect something different when you come to church. That man came to the synagogue because it was the place that he used to go with his withered hand. It's a place. He was used to going there with his withered hand. He was quite happy. Listen to me. It appears, you know, that he was quite happy to go along to the synagogue and listen to the debates and the discussions, to participate in the prayers and live with his disability. Lord have mercy. He was quite happy to do that, to go to the synagogue, to participate in the discussions, share in the prayers, but still live with his withered hand. Because you know what? In that synagogue, he didn't expect any different. It was just a place of debate. But that day, That place became the place of life-giving stream, a place of deliverance. Some of us don't come to church because we don't come to the body of believers because we think nothing is going to happen. But that man went along with his withered hand. And it changed his life. And so he says, I'm still going down there to listen to the debates. With my withered hand and all. Perhaps he went just to pass the time away because he was unable to work. <coughs> Maybe he couldn't work, you know, couldn't participate in much. But he said, I'm going down there anyway. Perhaps he became so used to his situation, he had no hope of ever using the hand. Are you hearing me today? Yes. Because I'm going to ask you to stand in a minute. He got so used to it. Sometimes we live with a situation for so long. We think nothing is going to change. And so he just went along to church that day and had his withered hand. Oh, glory to God. And we can live with this situation that we get used to it. And to others, it may seem revolting and repulsive. But we are just used to it. I tell you. There comes a time when you've got to say, you know what? Enough is enough. Enough is enough. I am not living with this any longer. Perhaps once in a while, we may draw attention to it by just using the good hand to pat it. Mm -hmm. You know, we like to feel sorry for ourselves. Once in a while, we just use the good hand to pat the withered one. And show ourselves some sympathy. Yeah. Comfort ourselves and say, never mind, you with that, but we're going to church. <laughs> oh, hallelujah! Never mind! Things are drying up, but I'm going anywhere. Anybody with me today? Yeah. Never mind! I don't feel too good, but I'm going anywhere.
taking you to church every way. Stand up with me. I'm taking you. You're not right, but I'm taking you. The left hand is going all right and waving, but I'm taking you. This is not doing too well, but I'm taking you. You're going to the house of God with me today. You dried up hand. You dried up situation. You dried up life. I'm going to church with you. And when you come to church, there are those who are saying, look at her. What you have hiding? <laughs> what you hiding under her coat? What she wrap up in her scarf? Why she keep putting her hand under her jacket? I have something that I don't want you to see, but Jesus knows. Jesus knows. I have something that I don't want you to see, because if you see it, you're going to ring Brother John. If you see it, you're going to ring Brother John. Oh God, if you see it, you're going to
dry up situation and make the difference. You know what the topic of this message is? Step forward. <laughs> but I don't get to that yet. That's what Jesus said to the man. Never mind then. Step forward. Never mind the onlookers. Never mind your critics. Never mind the perfect people in the synagogue. Never mind what they have to say about you. You have a need, you just step forward. Because there are times in your life yes. when you have to just shut your eyes or just look straight ahead and don't look to the right not to the left. Don't turn around. You just walk. Jesus said, step forward. Because today is going to be your day of miracle. With that dried up situation. With that dried up spiritual life that you have. When that thing you've been hiding is going to be dealt with. Because you see, those people in the synagogue they were very religious, but they were very unkind. They were unkind not only to the man, but they were unkind to Jesus. Because they started telling Jesus about the legalities of what his disciples had done, going to the field and taking down the ears of corn, and on the Sabbath day, and Jesus brought them right back over into the book of Samuel and quoted to them when David was on the run with his men, how they went into the field and took the corn and the Sabbath day and eating. Because you see, when you have a need, whether it's Sabbath or not, whether it's Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, or we are with Saturday, when you have a need, it, irrespective of the day, you seek help. You don't wait. They were unkind because they were wrapped up in their own religious thinking and belief. And you know, I'm finishing. Like those people in Jesus' day, I finished this tonight. There are people that we know who are Christians who just want to spoil everybody's enjoyment. They just want to spoil everybody's enjoyment. Just because they live dull lives, they want you to live dull lives. They were miserable, so they wanted the man to stay miserable. Am I talking true? Yes. They didn't want that man healed. They just wanted to perpetuate their religious thinking and the tradition. They didn't want that man healed. Just because they have nowhere to go, they don't want you to go anywhere either. They, don't, they just want you to be locked up in the house. Well, I tell you, nobody can hold me down. Because I'm free. Praise the Lord. I will not be bound by tradition and practices. I will be bound by the word of God. And I keep the standard of holiness until the day I die. But when it comes to certain things where people want to hold you down, that's, that's why some of us can't get delivered in church. Some of us can't get delivered. We can't get released. Because some of us just hold on to some things for dear life. And that man was dying. His hand, who knows if eventually his paralysis would have crept up and gone elsewhere. And nobody cared about how about him. They just cared about keeping the Sabbath and cared about their position 
when the man was in their midst every day. We have people in our midst every day who have a paralysis, a deformity spiritually. And they are afraid to expose their paralysis. But when Jesus turns up into the congregation, he identifies those who have a need. And to confound the critics and to show them that I will not be bound by these boundaries as temple boundaries. I move boundaries out the way to bring to you your healing. He says to the man, step forward. And everybody who had something, then they're all watching. And he said, you stretch out that hand. I'll talk about that later tonight. Stretch out your hand, because that's where the problem is. Don't stretch out, and the man knew which hand to stretch out. He, 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 he did not stretch out his left hand. He stretched his right hand. We've got to be open and honest with Jesus. If we're going to have a healing, we've got to be open. Some of us, we've covered it too long. So come on, stretch out your hand. Come up here today. Whatever that right hand is in your life that needs healing, just come. And we're going we're gonna to pray. That right hand. You know what that withered hand is in your life. We need to be honest. Because if you leave from here today, after hearing this word, let me let me say something. If you leave from here today, after hearing this word about this thing that you need to hand over to the Lord and let him see it, and you don't hand it over. Don't hijack anybody on the phone to ask them to pray for it. Hallelujah. Don't hijack them. Hallelujah. You know what it is. I don't. I don't. You know. Reach your hands up, please. Reach your hands up. Those who are not in the congregation, just reach your hands forward. Hallelujah. Brother Rupert, I know you're supporting your family, but find your way through and come up here today. Just come up. Just come. Brother Rupert Jones, just find your way and push your way through. Hallelujah. Come straight through. Come up here. Hallelujah. Reach up that hand, whatever it is. Some of us have dishonesty going on in our lives. Dishonesty, we are living dishonest lives. Today is the day. That cover the roof up, come right up here. Today is the day. We've got dishonesty going on in our lives. Today is the day when we're going to yield it all to Jesus. We are stretching out all those withered hands. All them hands. Those hands, those natural hands that you're reaching out are symbolic of the withered hands, whatever is going on in your life. So hold those hands up. And Brother Rupert is going to pray today for us as we hold these withered hands up to Jesus. I don't know what your withered hand is, but he's going to get healed today. Lift your hands to the Father. It's not by mind nor by power, but it's by his spirit. Since he does not think like a mustard seed, or say to the mountains, be done away, and it shall be with him, nothing will be impossible to you. Let us believe in prayer. O righteous Father, 
I come to you in the name of Jesus. I am your son. I believe that Jesus is the healer. I believe he is the deliverer. I ask you now, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, in the mighty name of Jesus, Oh, Holy Spirit, I thank you now. I just want you to say with me today, just say what I say. Father, Father I, ask now, I ask you now to forgive me of my sins in the name of Jesus. And I pray now, if I have ought against anyone, I pray you will forgive me now. As I forgive them. In the name of Jesus. Father God. I pray right now. If I have blamed you. For my situation. I ask you now. In the name of Jesus. To forgive me. And release me now. In the name of Jesus. Father God. I confess, I confess for my forefathers and for my fathers who have sinned against you. I pray now, I renounce them in the name of Jesus. Every sin, everything that they have done, every curse that have come down to me, I give them to you now in the mighty name of Jesus. And I command them broken. In the mighty name of Jesus. And I say loose now. I say loose now. In the mighty name of Jesus. And I give you praise. In Jesus name. In Jesus name. In Jesus name. Mighty Father. I will pray now. I will pray. Father I come to you right now. I am not worthy to pray this prayer. I pray in the name of Jesus. Every hand that have an hand on your people. I command them broken now. Or in their homes. In their battles, God. In their bodies. Some have come with different situations. Lord, my prayer might not be able to reach them. I am not worthy, Father. But in the mighty name of Jesus, I command them loose them. Loose them in Jesus' name. In their relationships, Father. In their home. Every situation. Every secret situation this morning. I pray in Jesus' name. Every sickness over their body. You said, I am the resurrection. I am the life, you said. You said your words are power and they are spirit. So we speak this morning that your words will be power and your spirit will come in the mighty name of Jesus. Break every infirmity. Break every infirmity in the mighty name of Jesus. And I give you praise, Father, as your people would leave this altar Heal them, I pray, in the mighty name of Jesus. Come into their lives, I pray, Father. Remove every sickness, every disease this morning. And I pray by God, you will be God. You will be the healer. You will be delivered. In the mighty name of Jesus. Show them, Lord, those that have their hand dabbling, Father, in the things they should not dabble. I pray in the mighty name of Jesus. Deliver them from those things, Father. In the mighty name of Jesus. Set them free from them now. In the mighty name of Jesus. Set them free. Every works of iniquity that they have their hand in now, 
We pray you will set them free. Set them free now, Father. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Name of Jesus. I pray for the homes, God. Go in their homes. Saturate. He come also takes their shuttles. But you are a holy God. You are a mighty holy God. Allow your people to know that you are holy. Allow them to know that you are righteous. Allow them to know that you are a pure God. Give them deliverance from those, oh God, that are laughing and mocking them. In the workplace, make them the head and not the tail. Make them above and not beneath. You said if we bring our tithes and offerings, you will rebuke the devourer for your sake. We will rebuke the devourer over their homes. They come on, so they said. Shindo said, you hate so shall. Over their finances today. Over their children. Over our lives. And Father, I give you praise now. The things that I could not pray. The things that I could not see in the spirit. This one. Emma, so can hear so shall. Some are going from here, Lord. But they have not heard your word. Your word says the man stretched forth his hand. And he was in church that day. And he was not a gossiper. And you released him. Release your people today. In the mighty name of Jesus. And the people said amen. Clap your hands for Jesus. Clap your hands for Jesus. Clap your hands for Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus.